All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to WMAC Now with your host, Chuck Stevenson, coming at you with a fight review. This time we're going to Hawaii for Bellator 236 Flyweight Division Championship fight. Elimale McFarlane coming in at 10 and 0, taking on Kate Jackson, the challenger, coming in at 11 and 3. Uh, you know, I picked McFarlane coming in, and, you know, I thought that Jackson didn't really just have that much of a chance in this fight. And, you know, I'll, I'll give Kate Jackson credit. She, she toughed it out. She's a lot tougher than I, she seemed. Uh, she really toughed it out in this one. You know, the fight, all except for the fourth round, most of the rounds played out the same. They'd come out, they'd strike, they'd clinch exchange, and then eventually Limule would go for the takedown, and Jackson would try to resist it, but then McFarlane would get it. But then McFarlane would have a hard time getting past the half guard. Really getting past, yeah. She could never get past any farther than half guard on Kate Jackson. That was pretty much rounds one through three and five. The fourth round, she came out. She really didn't waste any time and went for the takedown almost straight away, eventually getting it, and spent most of the round there on the ground. Um, Jackson was able to get out in the scramble, uh, got to the turtle position. McFarlane tried to jump on and was just way too high to go for a rear naked choke. I don't know why she thought to jump on the back, and she jumped on way too high. Um then she decided to go for the arm bar and flipped it over. And Jackson really had to tough it out um, to get to the end of that round. And then the fifth round was really more of the same. Just they mostly duked it out on the feet. McFarlane waited till way too late to go for a takedown. Got it. This time she was actually able to get to the mount. And then with like 20 seconds left, she decides, oh, I'm really going to try to go for a finish now. Start a landing ground and pound. And then... That was really how it ended. In fact, she was still kind of sloppy with the ground and pound. And Jackson was able to start to get a scramble. So she wouldn't have gotten the the uh, finish even had the bell not sounded. Just a really kind of uneventful fight for the most part. Uh, Kate Jackson, you know, I expected her to come out and have the better striking. Now, Alima Lee did show some improvement on her striking. Um. But considering that she's never been a very good technical striker by her 11th fight, you know, she had to improve by her 11th fight. Um, but Jackson, I was disappointed with uh, how gun shy she was. And I, I think it's because she was afraid of the takedown that she was just really gun shy with her striking. I thought she would win most of the striking exchanges, but she just didn't. Um, McFarlane, you know. I don't know why she would wait so long to go to the ground where she was clearly the better fighter. Um, she just seemed, you know, content to try to do it on her feet. I don't know if she's trying to show off her striking skills, if she just didn't feel in a hurry. I mean, I thought if had she taken it down earlier in each round, she could have gone for the finish way more. She just didn't seem, she just didn't seem to be in a hurry at all. Like, and McFarlane's always been a bit of a slow starter, but she just did not seem in a hurry at all in this fight. I mean, it's like she was just, where's the rush or something? Um, anyway, it went to the judges' scorecards, and McFarlane won. You know, I gave her every round. I think she got a couple 10 eights. I didn't write down the scores. Anyway, Alimale McFarlane, as expected, retains her title. So congratulations to Alimale McFarlane. All right, so things to work on for Kate Jackson. You know, she needs to learn to let her hands go. I just thought she was too gun shy. And in order to do that, if she's afraid of the, if she's not letting her hands go because she's afraid of the takedown, then she needs to work on her takedown defense. I think she only defended like maybe one or two takedowns out of a bunch this fight. Um, so she needs to work on her takedown defense in order to let her hands go. As for Alima Lynn McFarlane, I don't know what it is about BJJ practitioners. They just don't work on their takedowns enough. 
And I kind of know why, because you go to BJJ and they start rolling and they almost always start at a neutral position, already on the ground. They don't, you know, really start from the standing position, so they don't work on their takedowns enough. Which is why you uh, so many good wrestlers that go in and then start taking BJJ have better takedowns than most of the participants in the class, just because they just don't work on takedowns as much. They really don't. Um, so she needs to work on her takedowns more. And also, you know, show some urgency. You're in your home state. Uh, the crowd's cheering you on, and you're clearly ahead. You're clearly the superior fighter in there. Where, where, where was the urgency to finish in this fight? I mean, come on. You're on the ground. You're clearly the better ground fighter. Go for the finish more. I mean, she really didn't even try until the fourth and fifth rounds. And in both rounds, especially in the fifth round, it was really way too late to be going for the finish at that point. I mean, you know, maybe, yeah, just show some more enthusiasm to go for the finish there. I mean, you're the favorite. You're the champ. You're the reason everyone's watching. Go for the finish more. Um, as for matches to make for Kate Jackson. Um, put her in with one of the losers of this weekend, either Veda Ortega or Bruna Ellen. Both are content to stand on a feet. So I'd give Kate Jackson good motivation, you know, to let the hands go. Now, as for Elimelech McFarlane, the champion, there is only one fight, one fight to be made for her in this division. And that is against Juliana Velazquez. Okay, now normally I am very open to conversation. I'm here open to hearing suggestions. But when it comes to this matchmaking, this is the only fight to make. It is the only fight to make for McFarlane. Juliana Velazquez has more than earned her shot. I don't want to hear any ifs, ands, or buts about it. And if Bellator doesn't make this match, it basically confirms that they are protecting McFarlane from a from a fighter that they fear can beat McFarlane, who they're trying to push as this big star. So if they don't make this fight, that's why. They are afraid McFarlane will lose. And I don't want to hear any ifs, ands, or buts from anybody else. I don't want to hear any other suggestions for matchmaking. This is the fight to make. All right, so that's my thoughts on the fight. Kind of underwhelming for, you know, the fight that everybody was there to see this the, the weekend. And, you know, big coming home party for McFarlane again in Hawaii. Um, it just wasn't that exciting of a fight for me, honestly. Um, but you can't, have, can't win them all, right? Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Likes always appreciated. And hey, if you haven't yet, what are you waiting for? Subscribe to WMMAC Now, the best, fastest growing women's mixed martial arts dedicated platform on YouTube. Don't forget to hit that bell for notifications. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>